It's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France with Florence Villeneuve. Hi, Hi, Flo. France, of course, known for its passionate relationships in love, but also, interestingly, on the national level, France has quite a few love-hate relationships with countries like America, Germany, but particularly with the United Kingdom, something that's really come to light with Brexit. Well, it's arguably Europe's most influential love-hate relationship, and it's centuries old. Now, it's a subtle mix of sibling rivalry, admiration, and exasperation, and it often leads to some massive cliches. So let's just dive right in, Jeannie. What do the French mock the Brits for? Many things, starting with the weather, although it rains in lots of parts of France as well. The royal family as well, but we'll get to that. And of course, the food. That is a big one. French people can't get their heads around the fact that Britain has come a long way. And you can find really good food in the UK, but uh, these days many French people still think it's all about the greasy fry-ups and the beans on toast. You can see it here, Marmite for breakfast. It's things that they just don't understand. Now, as for the Brits themselves, they see them as drunk hooligans or stuck-up bowler hat-wearing aristocrats. Clichés, of course. The French even have their own nickname for the Brits. They call them les rosses beef, which is our word du jour. Why roast beef? Well, it's the French way of saying roast beef, which is, of course, the traditional British meal. Now, another explanation is that in the 19th century, British soldiers wore red uniforms, the red coats they were called, so perhaps that's where the roast beef comes from, or the fact that some Brits turn red when they get too much sun. Now, British people aren't angels either. There are a lot of cliches when it comes to the French as well. They see us as beret-wearing, baguette-eating, arrogant frogs with a superiority complex and questionable hygiene and a habit of complaining all the time, though there is some admiration as well. Now, how can you sum this up in one word? Take a listen. Uh, sophisticated. Yeah. Too close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're too close to us. Now, part of the reason that all of these cliches are so ingrained between the French and the British is because for centuries, the two countries were actually at war. And we don't have time to dive into this fascinating history, but basically for almost a thousand years, France and Great Britain were the best of enemies. So from the Norman invasion to the Hundred Year War, and then, of course, the Napoleonic uh, campaigns, it was only in 1904 that they decided to bury the hatchet uh, by signing the Entente Cordiale Agreements, which significantly improved relations, except for when it comes to rugby. Now, improved relations were on display during the First World War, when uh, French and British soldiers fought for the same cause. And then during the Second World War, it was from London that General Charles de Gaulle founded Free France and called on French citizens to resist the Nazi occupation. So important ties there. Following the the war, ties have remained close, though there have been occasional skirmishes over the European Union, and in particular, the common agricultural policy. Now, of course, you mentioned the European Union, and there's been a lot of focus, obviously, on Brexit since that referendum in 2016. A lot of concern as well for British nationals who live here in France or for French citizens who live in the UK. Because there are a lot of them. Let's take a look at uh, the figures. Some 300,000 French citizens live in Great Britain. A Three-fourths of them live in the capital, making London actually, in terms of population size, the 10th largest French city. And you can see it here, about 150,000 British citizens live in France. Many come here to retire, for instance, in the Dordogne region. There are whole villages where there are very, very strong British populations, but there's so much uncertainty as to what's going to happen uh, to all these people after Brexit. Will they be able to keep their health care and their retirement benefits? Will they? What, what's going to happen to their driver's license? There's so many questions. Now, the uncertainty has actually driven many British citizens living in France to uh, apply for French nationality. In fact, the number of people applying has been multiplied by 10. Take a listen. I came to France out of love for the country and the people, and I want to stay and continue to participate in this country and Europe. I feel French and European. The idea of losing my rights as a European citizen is just impossible. I've always wanted to spend the rest of my life here, after retirement. This is our home now. 
So there may be a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen in the wake of Brexit, but one thing will remain unshakable in this tempest, and that's the French love of the British royal family. And it might be interesting because France, after all, decapitated its royal family, but it's, you know, it's very proud of its Republican values. But many people in France have a secret love for the British royal family, though they won't openly admit it. On the outside, they'll make fun of how backwards it is. And yet French tabloids frequently feature the royal family, so clearly royalty sells. They all know about who's who, uh, particularly Diana, who tragically died here in Paris. And as for the queen, uh, people have a lot of respect for her here in France, and in fact, more respect for her than for a lot of British politicians. And there's nothing like a royal wedding, whether it's Will and Kate or Harry and Meghan. Record numbers will tune in, and though lots of people are fascinated, it must be said, it's not for everyone. Take a listen. It's pretty dreamy. A wedding is always nice to watch. And we'll all have a thought for Diana. It's like an old-fashioned wedding from the 1900s. People get all dressed up with hats. They ride around in horse-drawn carriages. It's beautiful. There's the king. And there's Diana. Oh, wait, it can't be Diana. Oh, Harry's a hunk. Look at those shoulders. They said it would be a simple wedding, but it's magnificent. It's normal, I guess. I couldn't care less. What else can I say? So the British exasperate the French and vice versa, but it's the kind of exasperation of relatives who ultimately love each other. They're the ultimate frenemies, I guess it could be said. And as the Queen said herself in the past, we may drive on different sides of the road. We're going in the same direction. Ah, well said, Her Majesty Flo. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, that look at that entente cordiale between the French and the British. Don't forget, if you have any more questions about France or the French in general, you can always send a tweet to Flo at Flo Vilmano.